so welcome to Soulful Success. This is a very first um, adventure into this um, new way of me talking about my business, how I help people and that kind of thing. So um, you, it's quite nice, actually. There's just a very few of you at the moment who are here. I'm hoping that lots of people are going to be catching this on the recording. And if you are catching the recording, please do feel free to reach out and ask me any questions you might want to ask that come up as we're going through this. So I'm going to start first of all. So how it's going to run today is I'm going to share you. I'm going to share my story with you of how I came to be where I am now, my little journey. Um, and then I'm going to introduce you to my new acronym for the word success. And we're going to go through each one of the letters of that. Um, and and there'll be lots of opportunity to ask questions and, and dive in yourselves and find out a little bit more about what I'm talking about. Um, so let's start with my story. And, and my story, my story does not begin in 2015. Clearly, I'm a little bit older than that, folks. Um, I'm <laughs> hopefully not showing it too much. But um, my my uh, my journey in terms of, I think the catalyst, I guess, for where I am now probably started maybe a little, a little before 2015. Um, I guess I, I always thought I wasn't quite good enough. Um, and how that manifested in my life was a drive to to really push myself up the career ladder. So I was in primary education for 20 years and every four years I moved jobs. I was determined to be a head teacher right from the beginning. And there's not many people who say that, especially these days in primary in any education field, actually. Not a lot of people go into the job going, oh, yay, I want to be a head teacher. It's quite rare that, but I was absolutely determined. And what I found, I think, really looking back on it was every new promotion, I kind of thought I'd start to feel better about myself. And um, and I didn't. <laughs> Strange to relate. I didn't really feel any better about myself. I didn't feel good enough. I never felt good enough, really. Um, and then in my in my final role, which was um, a, a second headship. So I'd had my first headship. I'd got divorced while I was in my first headship or, or separate from my husband who now lives next door with the second Mrs. Down. And that's a whole other webinar that we could do. That would be mildly amusing for you all. Um, but anyway, that's what happened. And, and then I went, I did, a, after we split up, I just did a lot of things to try and make myself feel better. So a lot of going out and partying and a lot of drinking and a lot of nights that started in Weatherspoons, which ended on a dance floor somewhere messy. Um, and a lot of online dating, did a lot of that too. And, um, and then... All, in, all within less than a year of splitting from my husband, I took a promotion, which is a really, really, really good idea. <laughs> not at all. Not at all a good idea. Really, really bad thing to do. And um, I, uh, I then um, just began to unravel, I guess is the best way to put it, gradually over the the months from from the beginning of September 2014 when I started this second this this second headship I just started to really experience stress but without knowing at all that I was stressed I was really 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 stressed and had no idea what was wrong with me my sleep went all to pot I started to catch everything so in a primary school obviously you're surrounded all the time by little children with lots of germs and I um and I, uh, I seemed to absorb them all at that point having been somebody who could always say oh I never get anything that's not what happens to me so I deteriorated gradually um over the two terms that I was in that role until on the 31st of March 2015 which is as you as you probably can work out just over nine years ago I walked into work one day and I remember from what I can remember, obviously it's all a bit <laughs> a bit shaky, but I remember looking at my computer and just getting this sense. I'm not even going to call it a thought, but just this sense that I couldn't switch it on. That, that there was just no way on this planet I could bend down and press the computer switch on button, which I'd done hundreds of times before and been perfectly fine and I just couldn't do it. And I remember just just feeling just lost really um very tearful and going out to my to the 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 main office which is where all my secretaries and business managers and people were and then kind of taking one look at me and saying I think you need to go home Claire you're not you're not well um I in fact went to the doctors was diagnosed with depression 
um, severe depression actually, um, which was a misdiagnosis I now know because what had actually happened was that I had burnt out. Um, if, if you'd have asked me the day before that if I was stressed, I would have just, I would have poo-pooed the idea and said, don't be at, you know, as I like virtually twitched, I would have told you <laughs> there's nothing wrong with, I'm not stressed at all. I'm absolutely fine. I'm absolutely, <laughs> just literally like a crazy person twitching away and saying I was absolutely fine. Um, and I clearly wasn't because I actually didn't go back to work ever into that job. And I was off sick from that job for a whole year. So um, I, I never, I never actually managed to go back. And even a year later when I was kind of compelled to resign, um, <laughs> strong armed is not quite the word, but it's not far off. Um, you know, I was encouraged to resign by the governing body and, and the people in charge of the school overall, because obviously they needed somebody to be in charge. And my poor deputy had been, um, managing, um, the school very well in my absence, but they kind of wanted to to have a substantive person in place. So I resigned on the 1st of April, which is a bit of an April fool, isn't it? <laughs> Massive April fool. Bang goes your 20 year crane education. And, um, you know, if I, if I didn't feel good enough before that, then I really felt a bit crap afterwards. <laughs> um, but I'd, but I'd lost touch so much with the education world and it is a very fast moving world that I, I just, you know, people say, do you miss it? Do you wish it hadn't happened? And I kind of go, I don't, I don't really know because I, I've, I've just been so out of it for such a long time. So I then um, had no idea what I was going to do with my life at all. But um, the universe had ideas for me that I didn't know about. And 10 days after I resigned, I got an email inviting me to train to be a hypnotherapist. So that's what I did. Because I had nothing else to do, as it happens. <laughs> so I went off to this course but to, just to learn about hypnotherapy. I'd had some hypnotherapy in the past. I'd found it helpful here and there. So I thought, you know what, I'll go learn about this because I, I don't have anything else to do. And um, I don't know what to do with myself, really. So I went on this course, and it was only really at the end of the course when they started talking about getting clients and creating a business that I was like, oh, is that is that what I'm doing now then? Am I becoming a hypnotherapist and having a business? So it was a complete and utter accident. Lots of people talk about just deciding to leave work or, you know, nearly burning out and then starting a business and all these other stories. But mine was a complete and utter accident. I never imagined that I would start a business. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I didn't know I was going to start a business. But there you go. I did start a business. Now, the, the fun little backstory of it all is that when I was off sick in about the December of 2015, um, I'd been reading a lot of books about depression because at the time that's what I thought was wrong with me. And I I had this idea, this kind of uh, bit of intuition that to um, that I would eventually have some kind of website. I didn't really know what form that would take. It'd be a blog or something like that. And I actually bought a domain name, uniquejourney.co.uk. And um, as I was doing my hypnotherapy training, I realized that that was my business. And I'd bought the domain name in December and I didn't know I was going to start a business until like May, June of 2016. So there you go, bit of magic for you. And I think that's some, one of the things we're going to kind of talk about today is, is this just realising that there is something more than, than our, us and our bits of crappy thinking going on. And there's, it's amazing when you see those little synchronicities happen. So that was cool and exciting. So I then um, kind of through the summer was doing the training, learning about hypnotherapy, doing more and more practicing, get, gave out some free sessions, put it in my local community Facebook group because back in the day, you know, we used to see people in person for everything. <laughs> um, and I offered like 10 free sessions. I had a lot of people turning up who had no idea what they were there for, but they'd seen the word free. And I live in Yorkshire. So, you know, it went down really well. I'd offered a free, free, free. What am I? It's free. I'm coming. What What am I here for? <laughs> Which was great fun. But I started to kind of get some people who started to pay me. That was like, oh, yeah, people are paying me for this now. That's really cool. But I really was utterly clueless about business. Education is like this, like any other public service thing. We're just living in a little bubble. No flipping idea. And you kind of come out of out of that bubble and you go, 
oh my god there's an actual world out here with things happening in it like business networking I remember the uh, so in the autumn of 2016 I started to go networking again completely by accident I'd seen this uh I think it probably was a, an ad on Facebook actually um for a PR event to learn about PR I didn't even know what PR was <laughs> it's for business owners I'll go to that in York and I got chatting to this bloke and he introduced me to this networking thing called the business network and I went along to the Leeds meeting and I remember sitting there eating this nice food and chatting about my business and giving out my little business cards and thinking am I working now is that what I'm doing because like I don't seem to be a you know escorting some naughty year six person to sit in the back of my class <laughs> I seem but I, I seem to be working this is working I was like whoa this is really really bizarre I had no idea any of this stuff was going on out there but in fact actual fact business ne networking became the 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 curse and the um benefit to my business I, I gained a lot of business from business networking I quite like speaking I quite like presenting myself and I kind of got connected with people built some relationships started to get most of my business, I would say, my first business, my hypnotherapy business came from networking. The curse of networking, though, was that I started to learn about business and the right, in inverted commas, way to do it and how I was insufficient in that world in many different ways. Namely, that I wasn't productive enough. You know, I was learning things like the 12, the 12 week year, which is like a planning system where you have these three goals for 12 weeks. And, you know, and then I worked with a business coach and he was like all about, right, here's your three year plan and your one year plan and your two. We didn't do a two year plan, actually. You had a one and a three and you, I think you had to make up two later on. I'm not sure how it all worked. It was all very bemusing, but it was all about having these goals and then, you know, working out from the goal, working backwards and it, and I think I think what's really interesting about it is that I think my lack of motivation was actually really sensible because my brain, you know, my actually not my brain, but my heart and my soul were going, what are we trying to do here? What's this? Your goal, work it back, you know, like because it just doesn't work that way, does it? So I think there was this like like friction, like it was rubbing up against. But I didn't see it that way. I thought that I was wrong. I thought that I was broken. I wasn't doing it the right way and so I began this self-development self-therapizing you know paid for therapizing journey to fix this persona called Claire to try and get myself to be well basically to be productive all the time to be like an actual machine and I don't know about you ladies but um we're not machines and I think you know, we're going to come on to this a bit more when I go through the acronym, but we're not machines. We're not meant to be like that. We're not supposed to be on it all the time. We're supposed to fluctuate, but I really would not accept that. And so every time I went, so I'd have these periods when I was like productive, doing all the stuff I thought I should be doing. And then I'd go, whoa, down again. God knows whether that was my cycle, the moon cycle or the Mars or Mercury or doing a flipping dance in the sky or whatever they do. I don't know, but I was... I'd, I was recovering from burnout also, just to mention. And so I would go up and down, up and down. And every time I went down, I was like, right, right, phone the therapist, get into the inner child. How do I work out what the root cause of this problem is? All the things, all the things. And then all the miracle morning, trying to suit myself up to the, you know, <laughs> I can see Vicky shaking her head. I'm not surprised, you know, trying to suit myself up to be this machine that I thought should be. And that went on and on and on for a good three, three and a half years of just, and I know actually when I say that, that some of you might thinking, yeah, mine was 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Like it can be longer than that. I feel I was very lucky that I was presented with something different, I guess, relatively early on in that journey when I hear some other teachers who teach what I, you know, teach the things that I share and, and they were at it for years and spent hours longer than me. I reckon I probably spent um, probably at least 10 hours a week on me. I think I could have run an actual side hustle business in that time and made a lot of money. I could have had like, could have done utility warehouse or forever living or something like that, made a load of money with that 10 hours. But no, that 10 hours was me spent trying to resolve myself and make myself be better. And then very fortunately, I was introduced to 
the understanding that, that this acronym is kind of built on um, in January 2020. And I guess what's really happened is my entire concept of me has changed and my idea about what success is and what that means has completely transformed. I I just see it in a completely different way now, now. And I would say that more and more of the time I'm I'm able to kind of work from from my heart, from my soul, and, and less and less this is involved. And that does not mean I'm not doing lots. I I, I do I am very a, a massive creator of things. And I love to make up things like this workshop and things like that and, you know, really enjoy it. But um, it, it feels like it's the drivers are very different and the energy of it is very, very different. So um, I'm going to go through this, this success acronym that I um that actually, like many of my very lovely ideas, came to me at stupid o'clock in the morning, <laughs> otherwise known as 3 a.m., or now 4 a.m. because obviously we've changed clocks. So now my my mind's going, oh, it's 3 a.m. No, it's actually 4 a.m. now, mind. I've tricked you, <laughs> or rather <laughs> the country's tricked you by changing the clock. But this is generally when I wake up and go, oh, that's a thing. And then I get out of my trusty Remarkable, which Vicky has now got a remark on. She's having lots of fun. <laughs> um, yes, the marvellous Remarkable. And, um, and I just write, and this is when this came to me this acronym for success. So the first thing is specify your success. That's about defining success on your terms. The, the, the whole concept of success as, you know, how many cars you've got, what size house you've got, how many hours you go on, all that kind of nonsense has literally not one ounce of reality in it whatsoever. It is just a concept that has been taken as true and, and you know, just just layered upon layered upon layered over hundreds and hundreds of years. It's all utter nonsense. And I speak to so many business owners who just say, you know, I'm I'm starting a business and my friends, my family, people around me are just like tut tutting at me. They don't get it. They don't understand what I'm doing. They think I'm an idiot for giving up this amazing job that I had. But you know what what's right for you, and that's your your soulful success that's what you get to define and I think we just need to fundamentally realize that the whole damn thing that everybody else is saying is success is just made up there is no reality in it and you only you don't even have to look very far really you know we have our western concepts of success but you go to other countries you go to places which aren't you know modernized and they just have a completely different concept of what success is and and that's okay you know and that's helpful I think to see that in other countries they just go yeah what what are you doing why are you all doing that you crazy western people what are you doing that for um and it and it's about like visualizing is a funny word because I think it's got a lot of future wrapped on it up in it but it's about Deciding what your direction of travel is and just kind of head it, po pointing yourself towards that and realising that it, it's not got anything to do with anybody else. Clearly, we're not railroading over our loved ones or being horrible or any of that, but we're not doing what other people are telling us to do. It can be really hard to ignore what other people think about you, but I do think it's utterly transformational when you realise that their thinking's got nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. And that's really freeing, I think. Um, you know, I've written here, the rules of success have been made up in a bygone time and we are still being ruled by them. And, you know, with a lovely group of ladies, I think I can say this, they weren't made up by women. The rules of success were not made up by women. They were made up by men. And that is nothing against men. It's just historically accurate that men have made the rules. Society is built on the male way of doing things. And that's maybe why often we feel like we're kind of rubbing up against it because it doesn't quite feel right to be driving forward in the way that perhaps the energy of success in the traditional sense does. And it's probably because we 
you know, we as women probably sat in circles most of our time supporting each other, caring for each other in that very kind of collaborative and um, compassionate way. Whereas men were, you know, our ancestors, our male ancestors were forward facing, chasing a wildebeest. And the drive and all that stuff has probably come from rooted in that. So one thing to watch out for when we're specifying our success, deciding what success looks like for us, is the good old imposter syndrome, the inner critic. Those voices are going to turn up, but they're all made of the past too. They're all made of our conditioning. They're just what we've learned as we've grown up. And none of them are true either. So watch out for those. And we'll be talking a little bit more as I go through this about thought and what that's all about. So that's the first thing. Specify your, your success, defining your success on your terms. So the second thing is understand your feelings, embracing your emotional guidance. So human beings are, are feeling-led, emotional-led creatures. Everything we do is led by how we're feeling. Um, we go through life trying to feel nice. The trouble is we get confused about where our feelings are coming from, so we tend to pursue the nicer feeling by doing things in the outside world. We pursue nice feelings, we avoid unpleasant ones, but with this underpinning misunderstanding, we end up in a not very good place because we're confused about where our feelings are coming from. We think our feelings are coming from the outside world, from, I was just going to say a glass of wine, but I think Sharon's there with a glass of wine. So that's marvellous. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know, we think our feelings come from all sorts of things outside of us. Glasses of wine, stuff, um, you know, amounts of money in the bank, et cetera, et cetera. But that they don't really come from any of those places. Our emotions are like a gift. I, I think they're a gift from our body, actually, to say, here, here's some energy you've got in motion in your body right now. And that energy is not generated by the outside world, but it's generated as our thinking comes to life in our bodies. Um, the energy of life coming into form in our bodies, thought becomes our emotions. And we so if we're always feeling thought in the moment, we're not feeling anything outside of us at all. And when we're navigating our way through business and our way through to success, it's so important to tune into that. One of the things that I, I, happen, I see happen a lot and, and definitely notice this happening for myself is that I have a little nudge from, from my soul that very, very quickly, almost like once I've blinked, my mind comes in and says, oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You're going to look bloody stupid. You, you know, you, you, anyway, you're not good enough and you don't know enough about that. And how rid you can't say that on social media. Everybody's going to hate you or, you know, whatever else. Or, you know, all the stuff that, that comes out when people, you know, when we actually share what's in our heart. And then we feel that horrible thinking about what we're about to do. And then we just stop. We just stop in our path. I saw it happening to me one morning. I was I was getting ready to do something to to record a, a course. I make courses for Insight Timer, and I, and I was getting ready to make a course. And I um, I could just as I went through the morning, I was getting ready, just starting to feel heavier and heavier and heavier, and just like you know, like just squashed down. And for me, it often feels like my head feels heavy and fuzzy, and I just felt. Blech. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to do anything. Um, but I, then I just stopped and I thought, what, what, I was fine when I woke up. What is going, what is, why do I suddenly feel so yanky and heavy and like low? And when I, when I stopped for a minute and took a breath and just kind of sat with that feeling, I went, oh, something in my head is saying I don't want to make this course or it's going to take it, it was it all felt like it was about overwhelm oh it's going to take forever it's going to take too long it's going to take me you know I, I you know it was all that kind of heavy thinking around the amount of time it was going to take me to make this course and as soon as I spotted it and as soon as I just sat with the feeling and just observed it for a minute or stood with it I think it, it just disappeared it, I didn't really need to do very much about it 
it just had its own its own lifespan and that it, that disappeared pretty quickly um so that's something that i think for me has changed my relationship with with my ability to get things done because yeah you know we want to have a business we want to create something we have to we kind of need to be doing some things some of the time um maybe not as much as as i used to but you know we need to be doing some things getting out there doing a bit of you know sharing what we want to do with the world and it comes it can come up so often that feeling that feels like it's coming from that thing that you want to do but really it's just coming from your thinking about that thing you want to do which is a completely different thing and and that that because we want to feel calm we, we're doing avoid we, we can be avoiding in order to maintain the calm or get it back as it were so that is understand your feelings embrace your emotional guidance so the C of success is comprehend your thoughts, navigating the sea of thoughts. So thought is a really interesting subject. Um, I think I, I did a little bit of uh, pocketbook neuroscience at one point and learned a little bit about how all these neurons and all this stuff happens. But I think that overcomplicates it for me. Um, the first thing that it's really that for me was transformational to know about thought is that I can't control it. I can't control what thought appears in my mind. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of gratitude journal paper trying, trying to, trying to, they're still in the wardrobe. They're going on the bonfire next, Vicky, by the way, the gratitude journals. But, but you know, I, I, I spent hours and hours journaling, affirmationing, that's not really a verb, but it is now, you know, trying to get my thinking to be different. And then every time one of those ugly, horrible thoughts <laughs> came in, I was like, why are you still doing that? You know, I've, I've like, you know, I've like hit my head against a brick wall for days now and weeks and months to try and get rid of you. Oh, well, and of course, I've been having, having snotty crying in a child sessions as well to try and get rid of you. And you're still flipping there. What the heck? This is just no good. So I um yeah, so realizing that the they just appear, they're just it's just energy, they're just blips of energy. They're not really they're not they're not mine to control. That that takes a heck I mean, it took hours and hours of stuff off my plate a week, <laughs> to say the least. So thoughts really are energy flowing. And and why do we have the thinking we have? Well, because when we were kids, people said crappy things to us and nice things to us, and we learned about the world not in a very conscious way but we were just we were we were just learning there was nobody particularly learning but we learning was happening and so our our kind of underpinning thought types have come from all this stuff from the past so they've got nothing to do with us now whatsoever they didn't really have anything to do with us when they were said to us when we were five but you know they had more to, they had things to do with the adults who said them to us so they've just got nothing at all to do with us but it's just we're this receptacle that they are passing through but they're not the nothing to do with us and this was the other fundamental thing that was so revolutionary for me that my thinking isn't true <laughs> that blew my mind because I was very attached to my thinking, particularly my thinking about other people and my ranting about other people. That really kept me very busy. But also my ranting about myself. I mean, I was super judgmental of everybody out there, but I was like massively judgmental of myself as well and very, very inner critical of myself. Um, and when I started to go, oh, you mean that really awful thought I'm thinking isn't actually true? I was like, whoa, that's like, that's a bit bit mind blowing really and and to realize then that i had this amazing system within me that we spoke about in in the previous section that was going to let me know when i was having one of those lying crappy thoughts because it was going to feel horrible in my body that was, again that was like oh my god so so I've got this like gauge inside me that's just going to go, hello, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the speedo. It's going to as soon as I'm like thinking a horrible thought that's not true, my body's going to start screaming and blue murder at me. Well, 
my God, isn't that amazing? Like, that is amazing, isn't it? To, to know that we've got this amazing system that's just telling us all the time. It's absolutely amazing. Um, now, what often happens when we have one of those horrible feelings as a result of the not very nice thoughts is that we then go back in here into the mind, into the personal mind and go, Right. Okay. Wh where's the, where's the answer then? Where's where's the let's let's try and fix the thinking with the thinking. That's really not a clever idea. And so it's like a Rolodex. Well, it's spinning round. I don't think they're quite spin, do they? There's more flat backwards and forwards. But anyway, my Rolodex is spinning, and it's spinning round and round. Well, I well my mind is in there going, well, there's got to be a solution to this feeling somewhere. Where's where is the solution? Where's the solution? Of course, there is no solution, because my thinking is looking at itself to try and find the answer to its problem which um, I've never quite said it like that before, but that is what's happening. Um, and of course, a lot of the self-development stuff that I did was all about, as I say, trying to change my thinking with my thinking. It's just like trying to get the crazy person to change the light bulb. I mean, it's just it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, however, what can be helpful is, is just to, a little increase in awareness this not this type of knowledge oh yeah it's not all true oh yeah when it's not true and it's horrible it feels horrible brilliant i kind of know these things now so now we can be more like we can observe the thought and go oh yeah you're one of those horrible ones because that's why i feel really horrible in my body and um, so we can change our relationship with them not change them and you've no idea how much easier that is you can't change your thinking. You just can't. It just doesn't work that way. But the more you kind of go, oh yeah, that's an off one. It's a bit smelly and horrible. And but but it's that it's there. It's just passing through. And we and we just go, oh, oh, hello. You know, there's another one. There's another horrible one. And we don't quite, we don't try to change them, but we don't believe them too. That is um it's really, really helpful. If it feels off, it is off, literally, like a smelly sock. Um, and I, th I think that's that's huge because I think when you're moving towards, you know, doing something from your soul, moving towards the success that you define, there will be some yakety, yakety, crappity thinking in your head that is just really all that stuff that, that kept you safe, you know, at some point, to stay out of trouble from an adult, we did something and now the mind is saying, oh, come on, let's stay out of trouble from adults. So let's just avoid. And I think particularly for women, avoid speaking up, avoid not being a good girl, avoid speaking out of turn, you know, like by putting something on social media or putting, sharing something out there when, when really, um, you know, the, we're not sharing what's in our heart because we think we've, we've got all this thinking that, we're going to be judged and other people are going to think we're terrible and um, therefore we're not changing the world, which is what we all really want to do. Um, so the next one is curate your awareness, becoming more conscious. So like I've already said, when we're becoming more understanding of our thoughts and feelings, this this idea that it's all, you know, that thoughts are really energy moving through you, emotions are energy, emotion, emotions. And as we become more questioning, I guess, of our belief of that, we can start, we start to just become a little bit more aware. We start to become sort of, it's almost, it feels to me like I leant back then because it feels physically like a little step backwards um, to become some entity, I'm not going to say someone even, but some entity who is the observer of these thoughts and the observer of these feelings, not, not that we are the thoughts and feelings. We're not even the thinker of the thoughts. We're the observer of all of that going on. Um, and when we do that, change begins to happen right there in the moment. I used to think that I had to get rid of these thoughts and feelings so that I could be in the moment. But what's passing through us, if we can just observe that, thoughts and emotions, then we are in the present because they're the truth of what is now. If what is now is a thought saying, Clay, doing a crap job of this webinar, you know, then then that's what's there. 
if I've got an ugly, anxious feeling here or a feeling in the pit of my stomach, and I'm wondering whether you can all hear that Bruce is painting the lounge ceiling, ceiling right underneath this room, then guess I can. <laughs> then then you know, I, I I but I can if I can just observe that, then that that's okay. Whereas if I think that's me or I've got to do something about it, it's very, very different. So the more we explore this, the more curious we get, the more we look at this, the more it's like that that thing. I don't know if you 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 remember. I think most of you have got children. Or you've been around small children who, when they're learning about gravity, the this little children throw and drop things. And I used to think, oh, that's just a game my children are playing, or it's naughtiness. It's actually experimentation. It's them seeing if gravity works the same in all the different places in the house and in the park and you know wherever else, and whether it works the same with all the different objects that they come across. So there's a fork going now. There's some food going now. There's a crayon going. Well, that's just children learning about gravity. And if we start to experiment with, you know, can, can I actually just be okay with that horrible thought being there? Can, can I for a few moments be okay with it? Can I be okay with this feeling of anxiety? And just be very curious about it. Over time, just like those little children by the age of five or six, get gravity and therefore you can get rid of all that horrible plastic crockery and have nice glasses and plates and things again. I remember that. They're all going in the recycling bin. <laughs> bye bye, Ikea. Nasty coloured plastic cups and plates. <laughs> but you know, like like we don't need to do so much once we start to see that. We have to we can do the experiments and, and learn more and more that this is really how it works. And that's a way of curating your awareness. Um Another thing to do is just play with things like sitting and watching your thoughts for just a few moments and just notice what utter, absolute rubbish goes across your head. It's just, sometimes you think, why, why am I, what am I thinking about that for? That's just so weird, so weird. So be a scientist, be curious, look, look for what's true, look for what seems to work the same way every time, whereas what's not the same every time, all the time is your thoughts and feelings. They're changing all the time, which shows they're not who you really are. You're not that. You're the awareness of the thinker thinking the thoughts. You're not even the thinker. So the more you can be in that space, the better, I think, of just the noticing. So experience the present anchoring in the now. Um... And and I think I've covered this quite a bit in the previous session, particularly about thoughts and feelings. As I say, I think um, th there always used to be for me like a trying to be in the present moment, like it was a thing I had to do instead of realising that I always am. And and for me, it's often about embodiment. It's often getting into the body, you know, like my, you know, well, there's there's a feeling going on here. Can I, can I be with that, that as it is in my body, that there is – some noise going across my head. Can I just be with that? Sometimes, you know, just feeling my feet on the floor and, and breathing because breathing and, you know, your breath, your body, they can only be in the present. Whereas your mind, your your personal mind, your thinking, it's like a time-travelling lunatic. It's probably a bit like that new Doctor Who. He's bonkers, isn't he? Bless him. <laughs> I liked him in Sex Education. He was really funny. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's it's just, it's just that, I like that all the time. It's bonging backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards um and it's not you know our body our breath our, our emotions as they arise our present moment they they can't be any other way presence really is the only reality and i think when we're thinking about success we've been encouraged to go right when i get when i get there over there there that's in my three-year plan i think that over there when i get there um i'm gonna feel great yay but really, you know, if you're not, it, it's about not trying to make yourself feeling great, feel great now, but to realise that now is what we have. Let, let's play with the Play-Doh of now, not try and make some Play-Doh thing, you know, for, for three years' time. And And I still think, like, I have a direction of travel. My direction of travel is that at some point in the, well, little further off than I'd like. I've got adult children. My fiancé has 
an 11 year old so we have to wait till he's a little bit older before we can go in our motorhome off to somewhere sunny and spend our time pottering around visiting places and working from my motorhome so so that means kind of as time goes on some things make sense and some don't so because that's kind of here that's what I want to do it means that I'm kind of gradually building more and more stuff online not offline um, I'm finding ways because I like to be outside so I'm finding ways to be outside in my life and building my business around that because um, I when when I get to these nice places in the motor, I'm actually to go see them. I don't want to be sat in my motorhome like because it's like a roasting tin in the summer that thing. I don't want to be sat in a roasting tin or or in hot countries. I want to be out and about doing things. So I'm trying to build a business that's got plenty of passive income in it. So so that can, but it's not it's not like I'm not like oh it's going to happen on the fifteenth of whatever you know twenty something. I, it's not like that. It's just like, yeah, this is where I'm playing towards this idea of traveling. I never did any traveling when I was young, but I'm definitely going to do it um, now. So, or in a few years time. So, um, but but really, just with that kind of, just vaguely over there, everything I do now is is really just what what's alive, what's present, what's what's fun, you know, the, and for me, what happens when I live my life from that place is just so many more, yeah, ideas and playfulness and, you know, just just fun. Um, and and I think one of the things that's transformed that to another level for me is this realization that the thoughts, even the ones I don't like, and the emotions that arise in the moment, if I can just be with those, um. It's it's really cool. I had um, a lovely coaching session myself last week because I I'm I'm on Amy Johnson's mailing list and her trainee coaches were offering an hour, so I had an hour with a lovely lady last week and uh, she just had me in the moment. I was getting quite emotional and quite tearful, and she just had me in that moment, just right, just sit with it and just observe, just just notice, and it just it does for me. It almost feels like I am looking down and watching it, like moving around, particularly in my torso and. I could literally, I could just see this like an energy wave, like just it was just moving about. It was up here, then it was down there, and then it was in my stomach. And and as I watched it, within I'd say less than a minute, it was gone. It just it just dissolved, and I was just back, you know. That the tears subsided a bit, and it was amazing to just see that just by being with that, just anchoring myself with what was there and then. It was really, really powerful. So, um, the first, the third, it's the third S actually, isn't it? But slow down to speed up the power of pausing. So, this is my, <laughs> say my area for development. This is where I am still, um, I'm still looking at this. I I've started to notice recently that I have a lot of noise going into my ears, like podcasts on even when I go out for a walk there's something going in when I'm getting rid of the morning there's something going in and I'm trying more and more to just not have quite so much which is it's a bit of a like trying to balance it out there's so many things I want to read and listen to and I can see you and you're all nodding because you do want to do oh so has got a new podcast out and they've got a new, I'm trying to keep up with all these podcasts and then I just went you know actually I need more time when there's just when I'm able to just get in touch with myself and and I think just I don't want to see this as a technique or an experiment, but just sometimes just just finding time during the day to just stop and go, you know, kind of where am I right now? I'm, I'm just becoming more conscious of how you are and where you are and what you're doing. And, you know, because I don't know about you, but I have a possessed mouse and, um, you know, I can like start the day really keen to do one particular thing. And then the possessed mouse takes over and it's over here like and I'm scrolling on usually on my email. I'm not a massive user of social media these days, but <laughs> the possessed mouse is like doing things. And so, and, and that is because I, for some reason I'm avoiding doing something. I've got some kind of icky feeling about something. So I've gone off and I'm gone to do something else. So. Um, and for me, that that that's when I, I'm, procrast I'm procrastinating. I, I know that I've kind of. I'm skirting around what my soul really wants and and the 
the the possessed mouse is basically just trying to take me off away because it doesn't like the feeling that's coming up because sometimes it's because I'm I'm you know we're going up against our growing edge we're going up against something and and then we feel the discomfort of that and then we we tend to back off but actually when we go through that something quite amazing happens I think and we we open up something falls away I think more than anything we, and we connect even more deeply to who we really are which is none of that thoughts and not none of those sorts and feelings. So things like just stopping for a minute and taking a breath and just checking in with yourself, um, slowing down enough to be response able with a little hyphen in the middle there. Um, I know I've got a client at the moment who's just like put a little, you know, if you've got a little magic watch thing, They've got special names. I can't remember any Apple Watch or something like that. You can that that I know some of the Apple Watches just buzz, don't they, once an hour? And I think the idea of that is to get you to get up and move about when you've been sat for a long time. But it could be a moment to just go, you know, where am I? Am I somewhere off in Fairyland or am I here in the now kind of thing? Um I think slow down to speed up as well has a completely other meaning for me. I, I've started to look at how my energy fluctuates as a woman in a, a 28 or a 29 and a half day cycle as mine seems to be more aligned with the moon because I don't have a cycle anymore. But I, I'm noticing when I have really super productive times, when I have times when I'm just fallow I guess is probably the best word I'm just you know that I just need to rest and I need to sleep more and I nap and go for more walks or I'm just not you know I'm not and, and I'm getting more and more okay with that I didn't used to be I used to find that extremely difficult and get very frustrated and upset with myself but I think it's worth just realizing and that's the the realizing what can actually come out of those very quiet periods. It can be quite amazing. So, you know, the I have a, a a freebie that I send out to people that I give to people that's called the Letter to the Inner Critic, and that came on one of those days when I was just like wandering around like a lost, you know, like a little lost puppy, not really knowing what to do with myself, and just just feeling a bit eh and horrible, and um, and it it was. It was then that I just wrote this thing, this letter to the inner critic, and it just downloaded so um, just from from nowhere, as if from nowhere, but I think from my from my heart or from universal intelligence or whatever you want to call it. Um, so just to be compassionate to ourselves as we go up and down in life, because that is normal and that's part of slowing down. Because I, I think what happens when we rally against those times they they just it just they just <laughs> it just like starts to hang on with its fingernail ends. Whereas when we when we if we can be in a place of allowing, when we can kind of know, I think to, for me to allow and accept, it's it's knowing that that's normal. It's knowing it's human. It's knowing I'm that's supposed to happen. It's there's nothing wrong with it. Then I can kind of allow it, and then bizarrely it seems to disappear quite quickly in comparison to when I fight it. So the last S is stimulate action from intuition, access your inner guide. So what I think happens with all the other things that I've shared today is that the more present we become, the more connected we become to our version of success, the more we start to see our thoughts and feelings for what they are, the deeper and deeper we connect to our intuition you know, our guidance in the present moment, the reason you're sitting here today, you know, where this webinar came from, the idea to do it, the the success acronym, all those things just came from completely out of the blue. You know, some of you here are, are on my Insight Timer Incubator. Again, that just came from literally an intuitive nudge that for a while I ignored <laughs> because I was trying to make it all perfect before I did it, but in the end I did. And now, you know, I I do feel it's been really it's been really impactful for me, but I know it is for the participants too. And you know, what 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 we all need now is in the world. I think really is to follow our own intuitive notches, to follow the gifts that you know 
we've been given because the world doesn't need lots of people who are the same and doing life in the same way. Every, the world needs everybody to connect to what's inside them and to really get that out into the world. And of course, those voices are going to kick off and say, you can't, it's going to sometimes feel uncomfortable because the emotions that come with those thoughts feel horrible. They feel fearful and anxious and sticky. Um, but I think if we don't, I'm not sure what's happening in the world at the moment, but it's all gone a little bit crazy. And I think we need something different. And I think if, if particularly if us as women aren't getting out there and sharing our gifts, then we're perhaps not doing what the world needs us to do. Um, so I'm just going to re-emphasize that cycle that I think that stops us often with this is we get an idea from our intuition. It feels good. It feels so good. It feels so right. But that can last like two seconds before the thoughts come in and say, tell us why we can't. And they've got a hole. They're like they have a scroll, don't they? I have the scroll. I'm now going to present to you of why you can't possibly do this. And it's because you're a bit rubbish. Um, you're probably a bit smelly, actually. Uh, and um, you're not going to be able to do this. And you sound stupid and you don't know enough. And um, and anyway, you know, when you stood up when you were seven in front of those people in class and they all laughed at you, it's going to be just the same as this. And you're probably going to die doing it. And so the scroll comes out and then and then we feel like Ugh, ooh, horrible and fearful. And and so we don't do the thing. That That's the growing edge. That That's the... But once we know that's the system that's happening, we can start to move up against that and, and release amazing things into this world. And I know there's somebody in this room, Rachel, is, uh, Sharon is is smiling there because I know Sharon has, she's been whacking that growing edge with a bloody hammer and chisel this, <laughs> all your technical issues you've had, bless you. Um, but don't trust the resistance, trust the intuition. The intuition came there with its beautifully wrapped, lovely feeling. Trust that. Don't trust your icky feelings and your thinking, yada, yada, yada. It's just not true. Um, and sometimes we'll need to slow down. This is where these, these two connect. Sometimes we need to slow down to see this actually happening. Um and and sometimes we you know we just need to put we just need to do it and put something out into the world and see what happens and sometimes we'll go it's like snakes and ladders um sometimes we'll go up a ladder sometimes we'll go down the snake or a shoot if any americans are watching later um because <laughs> they call it shoots and ladders you know um yeah so um the intuition feels good follow that always follow that and get what you've got in your souls out into the world because the world really needs that. So thank you so much for listening. Um, I would love to um, hear any questions that you've got, folks. Or comments or um, general anythings. I will. Hey, Kathy, thank you. I just wanted to say thank you because I found that really, really, really lovely. Really lovely to hear every bit, every bit of it. It, it was um, kind of like really resonated with me, the things you were saying and, and as you went through it and it makes such perfect simple sense and we complicate things with our thinking we don't trust the god-given gift we've got which is intuition we go off in all directions trying to cut it and chop it and add and this and that and the other and by the time we've done that we're just like so pooped out with it all it's like oh just forget about it kind of thing so that was really really lovely claire um brilliant job it's just lovely just lovely to hear you and all the ideas all the information and the, even how you come across as well you know so yeah thank you thank you so much thank you Catherine. yeah 
That's lovely. Yeah. I've popped um I've popped a link to a little four week program that I'm gonna do um starting in a couple of weeks, um where we're just gonna go through this and explore it on a deeper level so that um you can get a bit more support with it and and learn a little bit more and do that in a group setting hopefully um so if anybody's interested in that that will come out in the follow-up email as well with the uh with the recording from tonight has anybody else got any questions or anything you want to say sharon yeah hi claire just to just to thank you for this evening it was um I was just nodding away. <laughs> I, there was so much, um, yeah, so much that resonated about, um, you know, that that uh, the good feeling when you have an idea and then how quickly it can get kicked out by um, that inner voice, you know, that tells you, how stupid you are to even consider it kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and the lessons in everything. I mean, you know, talking about the course that I've been doing, just the fact that actually it was the best thing that it got, that it didn't go through the first time. Mm -hmm. That's uh, beautiful that you're seeing it that way. Yeah, yeah, because um, because I was being led by my 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 inner voice is a sergeant called who who instills a sense of urgency in me. Um, you know, I have to, and, and I get caught up in that mm. that sense of hurry up and get things done. Um, so that was really really you know sort of something i've seen out of it but um but yeah so um and yeah once again thank you for this evening <laughs> mm, thank you sharon it's been lovely kathy we are near the, the, the other kathy that's just come in we are nearing the end but i think it could be the clock change that's causing yeah i guess wrong. i got the time wrong i was just out looking at our partial eclipse here in florida oh wow yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, well. <laughs> well, try. you'll get the recording, Kathy. Okay, so great. that all come you. through. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, ladies. It's been a pleasure. And I will, uh, you'll get a follow-up email tomorrow with all the links and the recording. So thank you for being here. And let me know if you need anything else. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. Bye-bye.